Madam Rochelle Ford, Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, Honorable Leader of the Opposition Dr. Godwin Friday, Honorable Attorney General Mr. John D. Martin, Honorable Members, the Clerk of the House, Madam Nicole Herbert, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, ladies and gentlemen. I am grateful to you all for the welcome and hospitality extended to me and my delegation. This is not only my first visit to your beautiful country, but also the first ever visit by a President of India to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am happy to be here among the Honorable Members of Parliament. Being a legislator entails a deep sense of commitment and dedication in order to realize the dreams and aspirations of our people. India and St. Vincent and the Grenadines have historical relations established by our forefathers years ago even before our countries had become independent. We are both multiracial societies with a common history of British colonial rule. Our friendship is rooted in our common historical and cultural heritage as well as our shared values of democracy, inclusion, freedom and the rule of law. Madam Speaker, our bilateral engagement has blossomed in the last few years. The visit of the Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Rolf Gonzalez to India in September 2019 infused new energy into our relations. I am happy that India's development partnership involves various communities in this country. I am glad to note that projects such as the Bakvi market repairs and restoration, the community development project for Glenside village Mariaqua, and the rehabilitation and transformation of the Sat Vele agriculture depot into a processing and training facility have either been completed or are at an advanced stage of completion. India has stood by St. Vincent and the Grenadines during this COVID pandemic as well. As a symbol of our solidarity with the people of St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, a shipment of life-saving drugs and protective gear were dispatched at the start of the pandemic. India had also sent Made in India Covishield vaccines last year. India engages with the SVG at the regional level in the CARICOM, which has more than one million strong Indian diaspora. We appreciate SVG's active participation in the various activities on our agenda with the CARICOM. We deeply value our ties with the CARICOM, which is one of the oldest integration groupings in the region. India will continue to partner with this regional mechanism in addressing the challenges on the front of development and other issues. We live in a world characterized by multiple linkages among nation states and people across the world. Today, more than ever before in human history, the international community is linked together at multiple levels. Modern supply chains make economic interlinkages deep. Technology has no borders. Our families and friends live across the globe and we all are consumers of global products and services. The transcontinental migration of people going back many centuries now adds a special dimension to this global connect. The presence of indo vincentians is a fine example of this connect. People from India who came here 
in the 19th century as indentured labor subsequently became an integral part of your society madam speaker today's closely connected world has brought immense benefits to people around the globe through opening up of new markets new educational and employment opportunities greater access to information and new vistas for countries to engage with the outside world this globalized world order has also brought its own set of challenges climate change political conflicts threatening international peace and security cross border terrorism supply chain disruptions are some of the major global challenges that impact us all nation states would have to look beyond their narrow self interests in tackling these challenges for the well being of our future generations ladies and gentlemen multilateralism is more relevant in today's interconnected and interdependent world than it was at any time in our shared history multilateralism ought to be used as an instrument to promote a strong sustainable balanced and inclusive growth in all nation states however for multilateralism to remain relevant and effective institutions need to be reformed structures and institutions that emerged after the two world wars focused on one major issue that of preventing another world war to tackle the complex issues of today the new world order that we seek to build is to be an inclusive world order where every country can express its legitimate interests this can only happen by way of an expanded and better designed representation system in key global institutions madam speaker it is important therefore to ponder upon and examine whether the current world order with the united nations and its institutions is adequately serving the global community in addressing these complex challenges our objective in advocating at in advocating for an inclusive world order is to promote a universal rules based open transparent predictable non discriminatory and equitable multilateral system the need of the hour is therefore reform of global institutions with the un security council at its core to reflect the contemporary global reality madam speaker on this issue india and saint vincent and the grenadines share common interest approach and understanding both our countries are part of the 42 member developing countries platform of the l69 group this group is actively pushing for reforms of the un security council through an expansion in both permanent and non permanent categories of membership madam speaker i congratulate saint vincent and the grenadines for the stellar role it played in advocating for a meaningful and time bound progress in the intergovernmental negotiations process on security council reforms during its membership of the security council for the years 2020 2021 as as india celebrates 75 years of its independence we are taking forward our engagement with the world in line with our philosophy of vasudhaiv kutumbakam or the world is one family in india my government's motto is sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas and sabka prayas that is together with all development for all with everyone's trust and with everyone's efforts this also demonstrates india's approach in the global arena which means india believes in an inclusive world order that is sensitive to legitimate interests and concerns of every country and region irrespective of 
its size or wealth. We think and act for the future of entire humanity. India has remained steadfast in its commitment to share its experience, knowledge and skills acquired in its journey of development with fellow developing countries. I am confident that India and St. Vincent and the Grenadines will continue to work closely together in advancing these shared objectives for an inclusive world order. With these words, Madam Speaker, let me thank for giving me an opportunity to address this August Assembly. It is an honor for me to be here today on behalf of the world's largest democracy. It was a pleasure sharing my thoughts with you. I wish the people of India and St. Vincent and the Grenadines a very bright future. Thank you.